Hey everyone, it is Thursday, May 7th, and I'd like to welcome you all to our snack break today. I'm Jen Stone from Source, and I'm gonna give you all a quick orientation of the webinar tool before I introduce our guest today. Uh, you're muted automatically, but that doesn't mean that we wanna be the only ones doing the talking. You have access to the live chat where you can send a message or questions to the whole group. If you're having trouble with the audio or viewing the presentation, feel free to send, uh, check the box to send privately. And you can test out the chat now. I see you guys are doing that. Um, if I say hello or let us know what you're snacking on, feel free to chat in your questions anytime during the presentation. <laughs> uh, if we don't cover an uh, cover, if we don't answer in real time, we'll be sure to cover it during our Q and A at the end of the session. Um, you can also adjust the ratio of the video to slides by dragging that black slider bar underneath the speaker video. Also, the recording of this webinar will be sent to you after we wrap up. So if you miss anything or if you want to share with a friend, you'll be able to do that. All right. Now I'd like to introduce our guest today, Matthew Beats from Quarter 20. Uh, Matthew is one of our local makers here in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Matthew, great having you, having you here. Thanks great so much for joining us. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have some, I don't know what everyone else is snacking on, but I do have some Cheez-Its with me because I'm officially addicted. It's been my, it's been my go-to. I need to stop. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> anyway, well, yeah, Matthew, let us know. Yeah, if you want to get started and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I'm a native Portlander since uh, before the 80s and I've been around here a long time. Uh, <laughs> Got my architecture degree at Portland State and then my master's in architecture at University of Washington. Um, when I was working up there, I worked for a metal worker um, named David Galassa. And one day he sent me to the hardware room for a handful of quarter 20s. And I didn't know what they were. And so he's like, it's a threaded fastener, a quarter inch in diameter with 20 threads per inch, which is that what's in my hand in that picture. Because everybody always, always asks where the namesake came from. Um, and I think it was because it's a really basic but universal fastener that's really good at joining materials together. And we like to work with the similar materials a lot in our work. So it kind of just stuck with us and that's been our name. Uh, the piece of furniture that's right next to the handful of screws uh, is the 10 by 42 bench. And that's a piece of cedar that was made with a, a reclaimed steel I-beam in the leg. That was like one of the first things we put on Etsy a long time ago. We were kind of dabbling in furniture because we started out more as a design build architecture firm doing kitchens and bathrooms, um, that sort of thing. And uh, anyway, um, we were, we're always dabbling in furniture and now we've moved way further into that over the last 10 years. Um, so one of the things that we're working on right now is this ensemble of bath hardware. It's a robe hook, um, towel holder and toilet roll holder that we call the the, the, the bathroom, uh, the toilet roll holder we call the holy roller. So this is the holy trinity. And we've just started uh, putting this out because we've we've done a couple of condo projects um, with uh, WPA um, using this product and we're looking to move more into custom made product like that. So this is our brass ensemble that you're looking at right here. Those are great. All right. So going back to my past. So um, back when we first started out, I got out of architecture school. Uh, I built a house for my parents down at the coast and it was really a lot of fun and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, but I was really more into the detailing, the hand railings, the interiors, fireplace, that kind of stuff. That was the kind of stuff that I was working on when I was in grad school up in Seattle. So uh, I really appreciated the more hands on stuff. Um, so we, we moved out of doing more architectural stuff and into projects where we work with architects to um, do like high-end installations and artwork pieces. So this was a project we did for Nike Golf with Hennebury Eddy. And they, the three pictures across the top are the renderings that they did. And then the two, the two at the bottom are the actual completed project. So we worked with them developing details and prototyping, pretty much working out their models. And then we do all the drawings, figure out the installation and everything, work with the engineers. This was a really complicated but beautiful project. What it is, it's like, it's um, water jet cut aluminum blades in curves and they're hanging and interlaced with walnut. So, so it, when you look up the screen, it looks like a golf course. Um, Anyway, it was it was one of those projects where it's like they were they had really tall orders, but uh, we 
it was one we're very proud of because I think it turned out really, really well, where the renderings that they showed us and what we actually produced were very close to the same thing. That's stunning. It reminds me of that aqua building in Chicago. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. Yeah. Gorgeous. So um, other than installations, we do a lot of um, corporate interiors. This is a project that we did with uh, JHL here locally for Archivist Capital. And we did actually a full uh, uh, furniture suite with this. This is their conference room table. Um, it's got inlaid brass and the big bands of brass that wrap over the top is where the technology is. So you reach into that piece um, right there on the right hand side and lift that away and that's where the technology hides. We also did the uh, credenza in the back with a perforated brass screen, which was something um, we, we have good connections with local suppliers here in Portland and fabricators. So we were able to get perforated screen made here locally less than they could get some an inferior product sent up from L.A. So um, I like working with designers and helping them do things that they can't they don't think they can get done locally because they're like, oh, I have to order that from somewhere else. It's like if you look around, you can find someone to produce just about anything here in town, which is great. Um, this is one of the offices of that same project with JHL. Um, we also do a lot of custom hardware. So like these, uh, the brass handles um, we developed with them as well. So we can like make a prototype, go in and talk to them. It's like we don't have to buy something off the shelf. We can actually get a water jet cut and like, and, like make our own um, detail however they'd like to make it. Um, we, this is another project we did with uh, Umpqua Bank down in LA. Um, this was a very interesting project because on the 43rd floor and that conference table is 16 feet long and four feet wide and had to go into six different pieces so it could get put on a small freight elevator. So the, what we did is we split the surface up um, on with pieces of glass and steel so there's like a ladder that runs down the whole expanse and those two um, foot pieces are essentially giant beams that we end cut but then the technology runs through that in the hollow space but then the glass piece floats over the top so we were able to bring in like five six different pieces for the surface but make it look unified um, and get it through a standard three foot wide door as well this was this was a project that uh I think we did this la and end of last summer. Um, turned out really well. They liked it, and they've since given us some more work. We're working on some stuff with them right now um, down in Irvine. Cool. Um, this is a project that uh, is in Portland. It is Sarah Dispensary. And we worked with OMFG and JHL on this project. Um, OMFG did the branding and the concepting and then JHL did the interiors and then came to us to do the fixtures and the shelving and the boxes. So we prototyped a, the little greenhouse, um, the greenhouse display that has like a, it's got RFID doors. So you have to like wave a key to open the drawer and then the, the top opens up kind of like a greenhouse. So we did, I think we did like six or eight of those. There's two stores, one on Belmont and one downtown. Um, we were also able to develop shelving for them, which we're, we're working on that right now to make it a little more easy to install for homeowners because uh, it's deceptively simple as pictured, but it's not that easy to install. Um, so we're refining that and we're hoping to turn that into a product because we've had a lot of people, a lot of people see the interiors of the store and call us and ask us about the shelving and the, the store fixtures. Um, and the boxes too. We did like hundreds of those little oak boxes with a glass top where they hide the um, display the flower. Um, this is a project we just completed last summer. It's um, I don't know if how many people are from Portland that's uh, in this chat right now. Um, it's the top floor of the building right behind director's park it's got like a copper answered roof on it beautiful space um, we did this with JHL as well we did all the furniture for this um, the, and the conference table in this one actually had to go through a skylight with a crane which was a fun project wow. uh, we're, good at, we're good at figuring that kind of stuff out we have <laughs> construction experience we know how to get large objects up into 
uh, on into tall buildings. So um, another thing that we like to do is like, uh, you see the upper left hand corner, that little pop up, um, we use off the shelf market um, kiosks, but then we make a different cap for it. So we're able to make a brass cap to match the light fixture that was on the table. So like little details like that that we can add, uh, it's always nice to really make the custom table look completely custom. Nice. So the other thing, while we're doing all these projects for everyone else, um, our product line is probably about 20 to 30 percent of our work, and custom work is about 70 percent. But while we're working on these products for other people, we get to learn a lot of processes and work with a lot of different materials. So after we did the Nike job, we had a lot of aluminum left over, and we were water jet cutting a lot of pieces. So we developed this um, bar stool, which is water jet cut um, side pieces of three eighths inch aluminum. <clears throat> And then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, either walnut, birch, or oak on the seat and rungs. And we're working on flat packing this, but it's still pretty hard. The, it's got threaded fasteners, but it is very sturdy. It comes in a 25 and a 28 inch height. And we can do either powder coated finishes or anodized. The black and oak one is a black anodized aluminum. The white one is a white powder coated. Um, so we can do multiple colors in that. So this is one of the, one of the first things that we developed on the side and like well, while we're working on other things like hey you know this is a viable product we start selling this um they are made to order however so we don't actually stock them it takes about four to six weeks to get an order of four um down there in the corner is the giddy up stool which is another one of our early products that we developed for a furniture show and the cutout sides on that piece is where we get our wall stirrup shelf brackets from um, we find that <clears throat> when you're doing laser cutting or water jet cutting, you, um, you're paying for the largest rectangle your piece will fit in. So any voids you cut out, you're paying for, and you essentially own that material. So we always try and figure out something we can do with the leftover piece inside so we're not creating waste. And then it can also get us a better price for creating products people cutting two things at the same time. Um, along with that is a bottle opener um, that we developed. It comes out of the cut slot of the, the wall stirrups, which I'll show you later. This is this is like one of our first things that we sold on Etsy, um, the bottle opener. And uh, we used to sell them here around town, but now they're, we don't think we have that many in hand. We, we ended up giving so many away, we, uh, we need to make some more. But <laughs> not, it's really not that we have time to sell these days. Yeah, everyone needs a designer um, beer opener, bottle opener these days. <laughs> Yep. So that leads us to our different shelving pieces. So the three, the one without the bike is uh, pictures of our standard wall stirrups. So those come in, uh, they're made out of mild steel. It's 3 16 inch thick, so it's really beefy. Um, the sizes we do standard are 2 by 8, 2 by 10, and 2 by 12. We also do two standard sizes for IKEA. The one that has the beer on it, that's actually an IKEA lap shelf. It's like two by 10, um, which is really inexpensive, but you can make it look better and stronger with our product. <laughs> um, then the one down in the corner is a walnut one that's probably a two by eight. And then there's another Ikea one with a candle on it that's like a, a one by 11. Um, but we can also, we can custom cut these, you know, any size. We've done them for glass, we've done them for stone, uh, we've done them for big live edge pieces. Essentially, we can go as much as three inches thick and probably 15 inches deep. So um, we get a lot of custom orders where somebody's like, I want to shelf this exact thickness, this exact depth. And we can, with the hardware we provide, um, you can pretty much do 100 pounds over four feet evenly distributed. So like dishes or books, um, you're not going to have a problem with this pulling out of the wall. Um, down in the corner is our Velo Stirrup bike rack, um, which has actually been doing pretty well, and we're helping to expand that into more of like a gear wall that holds other products where we're going to have hooks underneath. So we're, we've been creating accessories for, for some of these things. We've actually had someone use the bike rack in a retail situation to hold closet rod. So we're looking at doing like a, like a one-piece um, dowel and shelf and two brackets that all come together as like a, an exterior closet because it's like a nice white powder coated finish. Um, you can make it look really clean if you can't hide it with something else. Uh, 
Awesome. Well, it looks like there's a question that just came in. Um, Ren is asking, can designers come with ideas and work uh, with you to develop something custom? And what materials do you work with most? Yes, we do. And we develop stuff. We can take, we work, we like to collaborate with people um, a lot early on. Um, and because we can, we can do design development, we can, we can do concepting, or you can come to us with something that's already drawn and just ready to bid. Um, but uh, yeah, we do, we do that often. And we work, I mean, mostly wood and metal, but we work in glass, we work in stone, we work in fiberglass, acrylics. Um, nothing's really off limits. Um, so, and like I said before, uh, here in Portland, there's a lot of people with a lot of different skills. So if we can't do something, we can collaborate with somebody who can get that material figured out and taken care of. We're working with some uh, recycled concrete right now um, or synthetic concrete in a slab form for Umpqua Bank uh, down in LA, uh, which um, I'm looking forward to playing with that material because I've never used it before. So it's it's always nice when someone comes to us and says, hey, we want to use this. And if we don't know how to use it, we'll figure it out because then we get to learn at the same time. Sweet. Cool. Well, before we wrap up, if there's any other questions, feel free to drop them in the chat now. Um, well, I'll give you guys a minute to put those in. Just a quick reminder that uh, um, a copy of this recording will be sent to you after we're done. And that uh, on Monday, we'll be hosting Herb Martin with Plast Pro Inc. Um, and you can always go to our events page at tothesource.com to register for upcoming snack breaks and watch archive videos there. So I'm gonna throw out this link to everybody. Let's see, Here we go. That's a link to Matthew's brand page on the source website. So you guys can go there always and um, yeah, get in contact with him and order any samples or any inquiries. There's another question that just came in. Um, which installation did you did you find presented the greatest challenges learning learnings that's still paying dividends? Um, I would say the Nike Golf project did because there were so many different facets and it was very complicated. <clears throat> there were a lot of different heads at the table as well. Um, so it made it, uh, it, it was a very good learning experience. We learned a lot of different things and things that we can essentially keep in our toolbox and keep using. You know, that's what, like, like I said, when you use a new material and you get to go and figure out what's the best way to use it, um, it's like going back to school. It's fun. Awesome. Yeah, super cool project. All right. I don't see any other questions. Thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, this was you. awesome. Yeah, such great products. Uh, get out there and get some sunshine. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Happy snacking. Right. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.